do maintenance on the Das 8, mm -hmm. uh, Das 200. Sure. You can take all the photos you like. Okay. Thank you. So we're doing some modification on it. Mm -hmm. So here they are doing uh, components. A lot of people are off uh, today, so there's not much uh, going on. Uh, and with the new helicopters, we will have uh, less and less capabilities to do components. Uh, okay. We have the uh, power by the hour contracts with the Airbus on the, on the newest helicopters. Okay. But, uh, so this is where they test batteries, and they or they make them? Uh, we do overhaul on them and we test them. Okay. We, we don't do them from uh, scratch. Testing of uh, generators. Okay. So for aircraft or for the for building? aircraft. We do much as possible here in Greenland, but at the moment we actually perform quite good, so we don't see that much activity. Um, so that's good. Okay. This is just a sheet shot. Tools and spares. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. Some of the stores. You also have the uh, upside. Uh, again. This is uh, the room where the technician uses for uh, scrutinizing manuals and things like that. Okay. So, yeah. This is uh, angle two. And this one is a uh, Bell 212 on its way out. So, been phased out and uh, it's going to be part out. Okay. Uh, so it's not going to be flying commercial flight anymore. Then are from uh, 73, 74 and around there. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, some of them are more than 50 years. Wow. Yeah. And they are looking actually really good. Yeah, I did, just by looking at it, I really can't tell that it's no. that old. But the problem is there's a lot of uh, limitations today uh, flying in Arctic environment mm -hmm. uh, that they cannot fulfill. fulfill. Mm -hmm. So we have to replace them yeah. with another type. We have in with the other hangar, I can show that. Okay. We have a, a larger inspection progress at the moment. Okay. So, yeah. And you can see we do lean. Yeah, we are, this is visual management to see how we perform. In terms of technical performance, technical. we deliver on time. Uh, is there technical cancellation and technical delays? We okay. have the lack of something, and that's visualized uh, every day. They have a meeting here at uh, nine thirty. Go through all the KPIs. Okay. So that's that's actually really good. So we know what to focus on. So those two helicopters are going to be. Uh, Oh, oh, oh. This is a 155, H155, okay. helicopter, and it's, uh, we have had it in service for a year, and now it's going in for uh, first major inspection. Okay. So you can see the engines are removed, the gear box are removed, and uh, rotor blades and everything. Okay. So that's an inspection that takes uh, approximately five weeks. Out of so we are using these for uh, PAX transport, uh, and that's uh, service contracts for, for the home rule. Uh, and we also use two of them for uh, search and rescue in, in South Greenland. And this is actually one of them. And this is uh, the AS350, a single engine helicopter, uh, doing a lot of tourist flying. And, uh, Minoring and um, uh, explorer exploration and uh, things like that. So, actually, we're in progress also replacing them okay. uh, with, uh, with nine H125s, and that's just a newer generation of these helicopters. Okay. So, we will have the first one in September, and then they are going out. So, it's happening a lot uh, in Greenland in the last uh, two or three years. My name is uh, Jørgen Elving Rasmussen. 
I'm a technical technical director here in uh, Greenland. I've been that uh, since five years. Okay. Um, all right, and I have my dash eight questions. You know, mostly pertains to that plan. What is the ultimate plan for the dash eight in your fleet? Is it planned to stay here for a while, or there are there are no alternate. There are no alternate. There's no alternate because uh, we've been looking at the uh, uh, ATR. Uh, a short uh, stall HR. It's not possible to, to land and take off on, on the short runways, gravel runways. So at the moment, there's no alternate for the Dash 8, Dash 200. Okay. Uh, so we have to stick with them for quite a while. Okay. Um, so uh, what is your maintenance program here like? Do you have to take any considerations into account given the weather conditions and the, the climate here for any of the aircraft? Um, actually, we have some consideration doing to the maintenance program, but it's actually positive because the 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 humidity is very very low here in uh, in Greenland, so we don't see corrosion like uh, other companies, so they are in in much better shape uh, than you see them other places, and actually we just increased the the service intervals. Uh, about uh, 25 percent due to yeah actually due to the uh, the condition of the aircraft uh, we don't see uh, very much uh, corrosion and fatigue and, and things like that at the moment so so it's only positive uh, concentration in relation to that we are flying here in Greenland it's no negative okay. uh, on the contrary right yeah um what in terms of the maintenance program is done here like in-house in terms of the heavy checks and what of that is done by other companies whether it's de Havilland or mm. Europe and stuff like that we're doing uh, all the maintenance uh, in-house up to uh, C checks um, and they are done in the uh, prevention airlines in Canada uh, and that's about every two to three years interval and then they go away uh, to Canada okay. for the sea chicks. Uh, what about the helicopters and the A330? The A330 is uh, the line maintenance is outsourced to um, SAS in Copenhagen and the sea chicks are done somewhere in Europe uh, and normally the last two sea chicks uh, we have had has been done uh, at the Sabina in uh, Bordeaux and for the first uh, sea checks on our uh, Mio, the coming coming twenty twenty five now twenty four actually, uh, it will also be done in uh, Sabina. Uh, we have used uh, Sabina for the last four years, and it's actually a good quality. So we will, I think, we will stick to that. Yeah, until we until uh, <laughs> we see what that will change. Okay. Uh, what about the helicopters? The helicopters are we doing ourselves here in Nook, uh, both on the 350s, the small single engine helicopters. It's called uh, the heavy maintenance on these are um, T inspections done every 600 fly hours. Uh, we're doing on all uh, nine we have uh, every window here in Nook. And from the 155s, it's also 600 hours we are doing. In, also here in Nuuk, uh, and they are doing over the summer, actually. For the 225s, we are also doing it here in Nuuk. Uh, so all the helicopters, heavy maintenance is done by ourselves. Okay. How does having, uh, so you have the one wide body, the Dash 8s, the eight Dash 8s, mm. and uh, the helicopters, how does that add complexity to the system of the airline? whether it's maintenance or logistics? It's both uh, maintenance, is also logistic, it's also uh, type rating of the mechanics, uh, the, the experience on the different types. We, we try to separate uh, the groups of technicians so they are not uh, doing everything. Uh, but we have some technicians that, that can do both fixed wing and helicopters, uh, but normally we, we keep them apart. 
uh, because it's very complex to have that many uh, aircraft types and helicopter types in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, so we avoid to, to mix it. So no, no, nobody is um, proficient on every type of aircraft. Everybody has their specialty. More or less, more or less. Some of, of, of the guys have both the Bass 8 and uh, for example, uh, Bell 212s uh, that we're facing out now. But we're more and more going direction of uh, having uh, dedicated S8 technicians and dedicated uh, helicopter technicians. And also we have, uh, for the helicopter types, that we have uh, uh, three different types. We are trying to separate them also. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it will be too complex to go from one type to another type all the time. That, that doesn't, that's not good. All right. So. That's basically all the questions I have. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks for talking to me. Okay, thank you.